This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Does the second season of Luke Cage manage to avoid most of the pratfalls of season one? Relatively few that there were. Let's find out. Yo, I'm Luke Cage. You wanna test me? You know where to find me. Ooh, got it all, man! Everybody talking about Luke Cage like he's Jesus. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. The bulletproof black man. For the hard rocks, he's a ghetto boogeyman of their nightmares. You can get a smack for this. Really, guys? You gotta know we tried, man. I ain't no joke. 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 But one man cannot save a community. You can't keep doing what you're doing. I have no idea what you're talking about. And believe me, Luke Cage is nothing but a man. Alem is mine. Damn! Hate to see such a positive brother like Luke Cage go down like that. He hurts you. You're not invulnerable, Luke. Anyone who can take you on bare hand, it can't be good for Harlem. I gotta find him. Bushmaster. What makes him so scary? We hope you never have to find out. It's a Bushmaster, and I'm coming. I've seen you raw, but never brutal. Sometimes we tend to get shit done. Harlem doesn't need a hero. It needs a queen. The darkness that you deal with every day, it can't consume you whole. If you let it, don't let it. Just to be clear, I'm not in the market for a uh, sidekick. Who says you're not my sidekick? Me? It's my show. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at today is Season 2 of Marvel Netflix's Luke Cage. And this is like Season 2 of Jessica Jones feels very complete. Everything that was begun in season one reaches a conclusion. I think a satisfying conclusion and seeds are planted for what should be in season three. And overall it's a pretty good run. Now, it didn't run into the problem of season one which introduced, I believe it was Diamondback and the overtly superior aspects of those episodes didn't mesh very well with the very realistic tone of the rest of the series. So in season two, they stick with that more realistic tone. And that's a problem in some ways. It reminds me a lot of what DC has done and failed with in movies. Namely, they create this realistic tone to their superhero movies, and it doesn't play well with that type of genre. I mean, superheroes are by nature ridiculous, and that's okay. I mean, I've read comics for most of my life, on and off, and I understand that, but I enjoy it nonetheless. That's part of what is interesting about it. It's the over-the-topness of it. Marvel has embraced this in their movies. They have a very realistic feel, but again, action, costuming, all that stuff is over the top. Netflix and DC, though this isn't a video about DC, hasn't quite gotten the memo. So, just because they're dealing with street level superheroes, they make them very gritty and very realistic. I keep doing realistic in air quotes because in Luke Cage, he's bulletproof. There aren't too many bulletproof people that I know of in real life. But, it's still played very realistic. And that's kind of tiring, to be totally honest with you, because as a comic book person, I don't watch 
movies and television shows based on comic books for realism. If I wanted that, I'd watch, I don't know, Law and Order or something of that nature. But superhero, superhero movies and television is not the purpose for that. Sure, the comic aspects of it can be over the top, such as like Legends of Tomorrow, which is oftentimes kind of silly. But again, they know what they're working with, and I find myself enjoying that show. Though again, it's very silly at times. But Luke Cage, and I, I won't necessarily say the other shows, because I haven't seen the new seasons of Daredevil, which hasn't premiered yet, or Iron Fist, but it plays it too close to the vest. It's lost a sense of wonder and fascination about it. For instance, in the comics when Misty Knight received her bionic arm, that was a big moment for me. That was, I was like, wow, holy crap, that's really cool. Here, it barely warrants, I think, five minutes of screen time, if that, frankly. It just made it underwhelming and just not very interesting. Um, another example is when Danny Rand and Luke Cage get together in, I want to say the third or fourth episode before it finished. In the comics, Heroes for Hire is an interesting concept. And I'd love to see Luke Cage and Danny Rand together, just doing their thing. But on the show, it just, it kind of feels kind of flat because they just take it too seriously. They need to just lighten up. And keep in mind, these are based on comic books, which are originally made for young adults and children. So, why take it so seriously? I get, I see serious all the time. I walk out of my apartment, I get serious. I don't want serious, at least not too much. Because that's not what I watch comic book movies for, to be totally honest. I mean, I want a coherent plot. I want good acting. I want great and memorable characters. But at the same time, I don't want it to be taken too seriously. Conversely, I don't want it to be too much of a joke. But I don't want this stuff to be taken too seriously because I don't enjoy that. That's not what I watched them for. And unfortunately, Netflix, with Luke Cage at any rate, seems to be following that path. It's just not as interesting as it could be. They need to lighten up and take it not quite so seriously. Overall though, I enjoyed it. Just, it's becoming less of a, like a comic book to me and more just like a standard drama, action drama, if you will. And that's not quite what I watch it for. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Peace.